Hey everyone, this is Ara Derdarian of the HDTV and Home Theater Podcast. And together with my partner, Braden Russell, we put out a weekly show on home theater, high definition television, home automation, home technology in general. And you can get that at htguys.com. But today we're going to talk about uh, my latest speaker build. Uh, by the way, after watching this, if you're interested in these speakers, please let me know. You can send me an email to ara at htguys.com. Uh, they'll eventually be for sale on my website at uh, ocreclaimtreasures.com. Um, so I put out uh, on the video stream, the video channel, I put out some videos from time to time on home technology and, and the speaker bills. And every now and then I'll throw in some stuff uh, in my personal life as well. So if you'd like, please subscribe to this video, give me a thumbs up, and if we get a great response, um, I'll be doing more of these as I will be retiring soon. Um, for this video, however, it's not a step-by-step -step how to, but what it is more is a documentation of what it took to build these speakers. And I have pictures and I talk about what I did, but again, it's not step-by-step. -step. And as far as the audio goes that you're gonna hear later on in the video, uh, you can only expect so much from a YouTube video, but I did make every effort I could to capture the audio in the highest quality that I could. Of course, whatever you're listening to, whether it be headphones or directly on your computer speakers, will contribute to the quality of what you hear. But what would a speaker video be without some uh, audio to prove that they work? Um, and I'm going to talk about the comp uh, components uh, and the driver selection in a few minutes. But before we get to that, I would like to talk about the cabinets. Uh, I do like working with reclaimed barnwood, and as far as speakers go, I claim that it adds a great element both aesthetically and sonically. Uh, old growth wood has tighter grain, which can affect the sound, and you know people will claim a 300-year-old Stradivarius violin sounds better than the ones they make today. Regardless of the sonic effect, uh, the wood looks beautiful, and I thought that uh, it's kind of cool thinking that uh, these trees and the barn that eventually turned into make a great conversation piece, even when they're not making beautiful music. This is a picture of how the boards started out. Uh, I then cut them into pieces that were a minimum of 14 inches in length. Uh, the speaker height is 12 inches, so I made sure I had a little bit of margin. I ran them through a planer to get them flat and even. Uh, I used a joiner and a table saw to get everything all squared up. Uh, the top and the bottom and the front and back are one piece. Um, the they needed to be about six and a half inches wide, the front and back baffle. And um, the sides were 12 inches, so I had to glue some pieces together. And at this point, it is really important to keep the pieces as flat as possible. So when you glue everything together, there are no gaps uh, in the joints when the cabinet is put together. And uh, in this shot, you can see the pieces um, are just laid together here. I haven't glued them up yet, but I just wanted to do a dry fit to make sure that everything at least appeared correct. For the components, I decided to go with Creative Sound Solution. Uh, they're over at css-audio.com. Uh, I had seen a video that someone had posted online which spurred my interest in the company, and I decided to go with the P215 kit, which goes for $439, and it's comprised of two tweeters, two woofers, and a crossover. But what's really cool about the crossover is the guys over at CSS make it simple to assemble, uh, kind of like paint by the numbers, if you will. Uh, you put the components onto a clearly labeled crossover board, and you zip tie them in place, then you turn it over and solder the corresponding letters together. And um, you'll have uh, to use some wires to do some jumpers uh, of the connections. And as you can see here in the, this picture, um, my soldering skills aren't pretty, but rest assured that all the connections are solid and everything checked out nicely. For me, the hardest part is cutting the holes in the baffles. Uh, but I used a router jig that was made by Jasper, and I think I did a pretty good job. But you can see the fit is not as good as, uh, say, what you would get out of a CNC machine. But any gap that you see is only cosmetic, and it didn't affect the audio quality. If you don't want to go to the same level of effort, Creative Sound Solution sells a precision CNC-made cabinet kit that only requires some glue and clamps uh, to put together. Once the holes were cut, I glued the pieces together. Now, uh, this being barn wood, you'll see there are some cracks and holes in the wood. And to fix that, I used some really thick Gorilla tape, and it's really strong, and it did make the um, cabinet airtight, and uh, it did add a little bit of rigidity to the walls as well. I then loaded the crossover and secured it to the bottom of the cabinet. 
I added the acoustic foam that's included in the kit and I finally sealed it all up and put it together. At this point, uh, the holes are sealed with the Gorilla Tape from the inside and I was able to sand and finish the speakers. Uh, the finish I used was Danish oil. I applied three coats and the third coat I took thousand grit sandpaper and just kind of rubbed it in to try and uh, fill in, like create like a slurry and fill in any of the cracks. Um, <clears throat> once that was done, I applied a couple coats of finishing wax and you could see that it was such a deep rich color that the oil and wax bring out. And believe it or not, it's more stunning in person. Uh, the last thing I did was cut out uh, the holes in the tape. I loaded in the drivers and the vent tube, and um, I added some silicone-based vibration isolators. They cost about $20, and they do a great job of reducing vibration and resonance, which can affect how your speakers sound. There's so much great music out there that uh, I would love to demo for you, but licensing makes that impossible. So what I have instead are some high-quality license-free audio. Uh, the first track is a bass track that I threw together using your garage band. And this is to get a feel for the bass. Again, your mileage will vary depending on your speakers and your headphones. Then I have a rock track that's loud, uh, not much dynamic range, but a representation of how many tracks are recorded today. And finally, there's a vocal track that starts slow and builds. I record it with two mics, one for each channel, and I mix it in GarageBand. And when I compared the recorded waveform to the original, it looked very similar. So without further ado, here you go. Just one kiss, our hands intertwine Open your hand, grasp mine together With you by my side, I could stay here forever Open your ears, whisper to me Tell me you love me, and make me crazy absolutely love these speakers. Uh, the sound stage is incredible. It's as if the band is right in front of you. The bass is deep, rich, and powerful. Now on the high end, they surpass my ability to hear. However, running test tones through it with my daughters, they were able to hear high frequency tones well beyond my capability. And I get such a kick out of listening to music with these that, um, you know, these are one of a kind. I, I encourage you to give building the speaker kit a try. Uh, people at Creative Sound Solutions are really friendly and will answer any questions that you have. And if you do build a pair of yourself for yourself, please share them with me and I'll showcase, showcase them on the podcast. Uh, if you don't want to build them and uh, like these, again, you could reach out to me via email. And uh, I do want to sell these because my finance committee says that I need to sell these before the appropriations committee will allow me to allocate funds for the next set. Uh, feedback is always welcome. You can send it to me, ara at htguys.com. 
Uh, you can support our show through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash HDTV podcast. Or you can use our coffee metaphor at our website, which goes through PayPal. And uh, we really appreciate you. Please uh, like and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>